Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jay Michaels, and we are again in the Passion Pit. But this time we're in the Passion Pit with Raymond Goode. Now, Mr. Goode is, uh, I can't, I, I don't want to put, I don't want to put one title to him because I have a stack of books on my desk that he wrote. There is videos of theatrical projects that he's done. There are workshops that he's handling. There is basically a corporation with his name on it. Uh, he is an entrepreneur who is using the arts and, and, uh, and culture to, to help the world. And now is a, an immense time for such a thing. Mr. Good, please tell our audience all about you. Plus, plus, first of all, I am honored to be in the Passion Pick with you. I am honored, so thank you for having me on your show. So I am Raymond Good. I am author, director, motivational speaker, and where I am a, a ple I wear a plethora of hats. So the five books that I have are Traces of You, Road to Oprah, Through Their Eyes, 350 Goals of a Leader, and How to Write and Print Your Own Book for Under $300. Now, Traces of You, I interviewed 50 people with 15 questions and turned their answers to marriage proposal stories. I interviewed everybody from 16 to 82, black, white, Asian, gay, straight, everybody has a story to tell. That led me to my book, Road to Oprah. Road to Oprah is my faith-based journey, which talks about me leaving my three jobs at home and everything I went through to try to get on the, on the Oprah Winfrey show to promote traces of you. I had depression and suicidal phase about 10 years ago. This is what the creator showed me. Um, when I stepped out on faith in my first week, my car broke down in Indiana. I stepped on a nail in Pittsburgh and was forced to stay in the hospital in Pittsburgh. And I was living in a self-storage unit in my first week of Chicago. So everything, so it, it, it started off as a journey with me wanting to meet Oprah Winfrey just to promote my book, but it turned into more of a discovery on who Raymond Good was and the thousand and tribulations that Raymond Good would go through to achieve this goal that was put in front of him. My third book is called Through Their Eyes. Now, Through Their Eyes, with every newspaper, news story, a story that I heard personally, I put myself in the victim's shoes and wrote their stories. The book has 45 short stories. They all have critical thinking questions at the end of every story. And it's also monologues for upcoming actors and actresses who need a piece to perform. My fourth book is called 350 Goals of a Leader. 350 Goals of a Leader was inspired by my first meeting that I had with Mr. Steve Harvey, where he asked me leadership questions that I couldn't answer at the time. He told me, go home, write down 350 goals, and then come back and see him, thus inspiring 350 Goals of a Leader with the dedication of Mr. Steve Harvey. And my last book is how to write and print your own book for under $300. Now, that book right there has opened up over a hundred self-independent publishing companies. Because once someone learned the, uh, the, uh, the uh, rules in the book, then they can, you know, put LLC behind their name and start promoting their own company. And it was written because I went through this depression and suicidal phase. And writing was the only thing that pulled me out of that phase right there. So I, if I can encourage anyone that's going through something, I said, write it down. Because while you're going through it, that's when you're producing your most powerful pieces is when you're actually going through something. So for the last three years, I, embarked, I started embarking on becoming a director. I started directing um, my production through their eyes. I reached out to certain theaters down here, out here in Richmond, Virginia, Firehouse Theater, Virginia Alliance Theater, and they was definitely on board. So I've been a director for three years. Since I began this journey, it's been 17 cities, 13 states, and wherever I go, I take this production with me as well. So I've, 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 I've already put on my production in San Antonio, Texas, in Memphis, Tennessee, in Washington, D.C., in Richmond, Virginia. So when I go to these places, I look for performers in that area. So, I, so when I'm in San Antonio, Texas, I have a network of performers in San Antonio, Texas. When I go to D.C., I have a network of performers in D.C., so when I go to this place and I say, hey, I have a production I need to put on. Hey, are you ready? You ready? No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Boom. Let's, put, let's get to work. Now, um, through their eyes, uh, the production is actually, uh, I call it an evening of monologues, music, and art. And I've taken several other stories out of book and put it on stage. 
There's a performer that performs during set change, and there's different artists that paint pictures that correlate with the stories. So it combines all of the creative talents together on stage at once. Now, for instance, so uh, some of my artists, some of my creative, uh, my visual artists, they donate their pieces to the show. So uh, a female down in uh, San Antonio, Texas, she had 3D artwork. She donated it to the show after we did her piece. I did the, the, the uh, performance down here in Richmond, Virginia, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. They absolutely love this piece. And now they, she has an art gallery inside the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, it works on many, many, many levels. Yes. I need to take a nap now because I'm exhausted just from hearing all the things that you're doing. Um, uh, okay, what this is really brilliant. Uh, I'm I'm a huge fan, obviously, of 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 diversification in terms of the arts. Um, but what's the through line? Uh, we have we have books we on so many topics. We have art. We have video. We have everything. What's your through line? Why are you doing all of these things? Well, when the vision hit me, and maybe it's just so real to me, but when it hit me, the ultimate goal was to meet Oprah Winfrey. That was the ultimate goal. And that still is the ultimate goal. Now, it doesn't matter how many avenues or venues I need to go through, how many plays I need to put on, how many books I need to write, how many trials and tribulations, that's still the ultimate goal. But while I am, while I am pursuing to finish that one goal there, it's just so many different opportunities and ventures have come about. And it's allowed Raymond Gould to find out, oh, Raymond Gould, once you go through this fire, it wasn't as hard as before as you thought it was before. Because fear is, uh, you know, fear is there. But once you walk through that flame, then it's like, oh, I can do that. So it turned more into what Raymond Gould can go through, what he can endure, and what he can offer back to the world. So I want to say that the one ultimate goal, the one vision, the one little small vision that was given to me was that, hey, meet Oprah Winfrey. And whatever branched out from there, I just allowed the creator to use me in every form that there is. Okay. Um, I'm, I want to I wanna see if I, can, if I can understand. Now, who is Oprah Winfrey to you? Um, you said you want to meet her. Why her? Why, who is she to you? Uh, she was the one goal that was given to me to make me step out on this path and journey. And it's the one goal that needs to be completed. With, with, without that, that part of the vision right there, then none of this would have came about. Without that part of the vision, then the depression and suicidal might have actually taken over. So you look so at her. Is, I'm sorry, please go on. So that just makes it uh, the end, well, the end goal, but the beginning goal. And yes, yes. And, and, and it doesn't matter how many avenues. That, so with the, they say you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So that's just one very small basket over here. Um, when it comes down to the plays and the productions, it's for uh, theater goers. It's to give people uh, jobs to be on stage. It's for... Uh, directors to have a fresh look at a new production and say, hey, I wouldn't mind putting this on and Raymond Gould becomes the playwright. 350 Goals of a Leader is just going to inspire you and motivate you to be leaders in different avenues. Everything has a, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, I, so you, ha you hold Oprah Winfrey in, in very high regard and, and she herself is an entrepreneur. There's, there's, there's books, there's magazines, there's television shows, there's, there's industry, she is an industry. So one can almost look at this spiritually, if you will, you are, you are building yourself so that you are, you are, uh, you are ready to meet her. You are building yes. up Raymond Good so that you are ready to meet her. Yes, sir. Exactly. That's, that's why when I was, uh, speaking to Mr. Harvey on, on the, on the happen chance that we had happened to meet when I was speaking to him and he asked me and I happened to, and I happened to speak and I said, I'm a leader. And he asked me, what are you a leader of? And I could easily say, I'm here to motivate. I'm here to inspire. But when you're in front of the world leaders, like you per se, when you're in front of the world leaders, they want to know, how are you inspiring? How are you motivating? So all of the, uh, 
all of the people that I'm meeting, all the people that ask me the questions, like when he asked me those questions and they stopped me, it's only getting me bigger and better for when I actually have that one meet with her. I'd be ready to know what I say. So I am grateful for all of the interviews. I am grateful for all of the conversations that I have with regular people that just ask me very, very tough questions. I'm grateful for all of the questions that stump me because it gives me a chance to go back and reevaluate those questions and have an answer when that time comes. There's, uh, there's a, a, an, old, an old short story uh, that I read many years ago that affected me greatly. It was called The Fourth Wise Man. And it was about one more wise man who saw the star over Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. And he begins this journey to, uh, to Bethlehem, and it takes him 33 years. But uh, so he doesn't meet the baby. Uh, he, uh, he and and it, it's it's not even so much about his meeting, but about the fact that he grows as a human being while he's making this journey. And and I'm getting that spiritual sense from you. I'm getting the sense that that you uh, you've set this goal, but it's not so much to meet Oprah Winfrey, if you will, not physically, but right. to be the kind of person who would be with her. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yes. And, and it's just growing. It's growing. I'm growing. I, I, I'm not the same person that I was when I first began this journey 10 years ago. I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago. I continue to, to grow. And it is, it is a beautiful thing to know that Raymond Gould can do all of these possible, impossible things. It's, it's, it's good to know who I am. It's good to go through these trials and tribulations. And it's fun. It's, it's enjoyable. I, I know that once I reach that level and, and, and the contracts and the money and the sharks start coming into play, that's when it's going to be, let's get it. But while I'm in this journey and phase right here and for the last 10 years, I am just having the blast and time of my life. And, and you're helping people while you're going along. That, Definitely. That's, that's the beautiful thing. Okay, here I go. I'm heading for my golden moment. But as long as I'm heading for that golden moment, I'm going to throw more gold at other people as I'm, I'm going along. So you're helping so it. many lives just, just to make you. A... <sighs> Let's bring everybody on board. This play, this, this vision was so big and powerful. Everybody can come on board. Hey, how to write and print their own book for under three. I, I, I tell people that have kids that have you. Hey, your kids, 12, 9, 10 years old. You have their kid write about 20 poems in a book. I don't care if they're good or bad. You put their name on it. You put it in the book. Now they become authors. Now while they're out there, you get one school to say, hey, I want this kid to come talk to my class. Now that person, now that kid is a motivational speaker for the rest of their life just because they talk to that one class. I want everybody, if I'm coming up from this vision that was given to me, then I want everybody to come up with me. That's black, white, Asian, I don't care. Everybody has a dream. Everybody has a vision. Everyone has a purpose on planet on earth. I think that's terrific. And I think that's the epitome of being an artist. Uh, I hear people say, this is what I'm focusing on. This is all I'm doing. You're, you're, you, are, you are the genuine artist. You just open up all your talents to people and let them grow in different directions. It's like you're, you're planting a myriad of seeds on your journey. Really excellent. Okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're in the middle of a, of a uh, the, the reason I know how to work Zoom is because I can't get out of my house. Uh, mm -hmm. How has this pandemic stopped or helped even your journey? What has, how has it influenced your journey? Um, influence. Uh, <laughs> or if it hasn't influenced, uh, if it's hurt, what, what, no, did, no, 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 what has no. it done for you? It, it, it really has because uh, I do a lot of person-to-person uh, -person selling with my books, and I do it carefully. I wear the mask. Uh, I ask people before I, 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 I come up on them, before I come up on them, to even come up on them. I tell them that I'm an author and everything. But since no one's really at work, like, they're all in Walmart parking lots, so it's helped me tremendously because <laughs> a lot of my uh, business transactions are really person-to-person. -person. Like, I probably sell more person to person than I do even on my website. So, yeah, is and, and then I encourage people that during this time that, that the world is down, this is when your create, creativity needs to be at its highest. 
This is when you should be writing and painting and, 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 and dancing your life away because when the world opens back up, it is the artists and the uh, performers who's gonna become the essential workers. After everybody has finished rioting and protesting and COVID-19, they're gonna flock to the theater. They're gonna flock to uh, film. They're gonna flock to entertainment. And that's when we need to come out with our biggest, best, most amazing work. So, so your, your main philosophy now is, because a lot of people are saying, okay, I'm sitting home and that's it. Your main philosophy is, okay, we're here, but, but we can be everywhere thanks to technology. We need to be everywhere. We need to say, okay, now is my chance to tell everyone around the world what's going on because I can. Yes, and everyone's watching. Everyone is Zooming. They're all on social media. They're, they're posting, like, whatever creative talent that you have right now, this is the time to be getting it out there. This is the time to, to, be, to be contacting your, your counterpart. This is the time that Raymond Gould Kuh, Raymond Kuh can contact Jay Michaels because the world is down right now. So this is the time that all artists need to be going full force while everybody is, is yes. I, yes. I, I have to tell you, um, you, you, you said something which, which sparked, when, when you contacted me first, uh, I, I said, how did you hear about me? And, mm -hmm. and you said something, well, the great good luck, the glorious that I found you. <laughs> <laughs> Just burst. <laughs> I thought, all right, all right, there you go. Uh, either this guy is BSing like a pro, or, there, or there's a real <laughs> And I'm seeing it's definitely the latter. Um, Bless. Uh, now, you're saying uh, you're, you're connecting to so many people. You're connecting the art to so many people. We're in a very odd time. Uh, you mentioned the protests. Uh, how do you feel about what's going on out there now? Um, protest, peace for yeah. protest. Yes, rioting. I'm not a fan of rioting. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of, of rioting, but that's how they plan to express themselves. They, that's for them, but I'm not a fan of rioting. But we have to have a plan after this. What is the plan? While you're out there protesting, you're around a bunch of uh, multinational people. You're around white, you're around Asians, you're around, now is the time that you want to be, a, these are the times to talk to you because they want to help you. Hey, you're an author, this is an author, you want to talk to someone white, you want to open up door right there. This is the time to talk while you're out there protesting. Hey, I got this business going on. How can we connect together to do something? Like at some point in time, the protest and rioting has to slow down. How are you going to emerge further after this? Um, this is the time to be, hey, if, if, if African-American, Black, I don't care what you want to call it, but hey, you want to go to an all-white school, this is the time to be contacting those schools because they want to be open. They want to give you an opportunity. So this is, what, are, what are we going to do after we're done with protesting and rioting? Because that's what I'm focused on. When this protest and rioting, when all this calms down, like I said, they're going to be going back to the theater. And that's the time when we need to prove our most utmost right there. They're going to be going back to uh, the uh, theaters to see films and stuff. That's when we need to prove it. Yes, what are we doing after this? I'm already looking at after. So you're saying during this protest, uh, it, it's, it's not so much about moving forward screaming. It's about turning to the person next to you and just say, well, what do you do? Well, what's going on with you? Well, why are you here? Simple. Yes, sir. Simple. Simple. That's really great. That's really great. Um, how has it, um, uh, what is your philosophy? Okay, uh, uh, I'm a bit older than you. And I, <laughs> I uh, even as a kid, I remember the protests of the 60s. I, I was a reporter for the Daily News during the Rodney King protests. So I remember those quite clearly. So many other things. This is a different protest now. This is different. I'm getting a sense that, that it, 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 so many times you go, okay, okay, this is terrible, okay, let's fix it, and then no one, nothing happens, and then it just starts again. I don't think we're going to reach that. I think things are definitely going to happen now. What do you, uh, you think it's different now? Am I wrong? Is it a different protest that I'm seeing? It's it is definitely. Uh, if you will. It is definitely different. Um, what everybody thought the norm was, it's not going back to the norm. I didn't believe in the norm anyway, because I don't know what's normal anyway, because I'm an artist. But it's definitely not going to go back 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm writing that down. That's good. Okay. <laughs> I was definitely not going to go back to whatever norm that uh, people thought the norm was. I'm here in Richmond, Virginia, and I've seen that they started taking down statues of some uh, right. of the Confederate. So that's already a step in the right direction or you know, a step in a different direction. Let me, let me say that. Stuff. So I see things changing and it will never go back to the norm. But if turning to the person and saying, how can I help you or how can you help me? Then it, it has to move forward. It just has to move forward. So, yeah. Do you also feel that social media, social media is so pervasive now. We, we've had it for, for decades, but it is so pervasive now. It is, it is in our, it, it's in our blood already. Um, do you feel it's because we, again, I'm, I'm looking at a time when, when Life Magazine started printing pictures of Vietnam and we never saw war right there as a war and it changed our philosophy on war. Do you think because we're, we're so inundated with everything immediately and in, in real time, we're seeing camera photos and videos of what's going on, that that our opinions can't go back. We just can't go back. We have seen the truth again. Definitely. Our eyes are, are way more open now because of the camera work. And, and I don't want to lose out on because I am still a uh, fanatic of uh, meeting people and being in places and instead of just having a camera. Like, I would, if it wasn't for uh, the coronavirus, I would have loved to have been on the bus and sitting there right with you having this passion. So I, I don't want the uh, technology to get in way of, of human interaction and human contact. But yes, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a whole different route. It's gonna be a whole different way. I just want to make sure that we're always looking forward after this right here. I, I get the idea from what you're saying. You, you have the mathematical equation. One of my favorite political satirists is Bill Maher. And he made a point of saying that if there was no camera phone, then the George Floyd incident would look very different in the police report. Uh, but we had it right there. And, and the equation I'm, I'm hearing from you, okay, we have that. And so now we must speak. We now have to then put down the phone and say, I'm going to talk to that person. I'm going to learn from that person. I have to read that. I have to contact them. That because we were, we were so behind the camera that now we must be faced. Yes. Yes. And you're yes. doing that with your books. You're doing that with your theatrical projects. You're doing that with your events. You're, you're basically saying, okay, I've learned. I'm, gonna, I'm on my way to Oprah. But but I'm I'm the fourth wise man and I'm I'm heading for Oprah. But until then, I'm going to to help everyone I can along the way. I I, I truly believe that I'm doing it with every fiber of my body, with every person that I come into contact with, with whether it's the great J Mike that I'm talking to, or whether it's the homeless bum on the street drinking a beer. I try to motivate and inspire with every part of my fiber because I believe everybody needs it and they want it. And, and they want it, and we are all aspired for greatness. My God, I've, I've learned so much just from talking and interacting with people. The bum, the, the, the homeless guy, I don't want to just call him a bum, the homeless person is on the end of the street having a beer, has educated me so much. Just got to listen. You just have to listen to people. People, people want to talk. As an artist, I have to listen. And I like to listen. I like to encourage. And I like to motivate. And I like to do it all the time. <laughs> All the time. So I, I know the answer. My, my last question to you, and I know the answer to this, so I'm just going to sit back and smile as you're saying it. When the doors open, when we take off our masks and we can meet people again, what are you going to do? I'm going to do it all. <laughs> I'm, I'm, go, I'm, go, I'm going to insert myself into, I'm going to let the creator use me as a vessel. I'm going to let the creator use me as a vessel where I am, where the uh, path is shown is where I go, is what I've been doing for the last 10 years is why I know in some states or cities that I go into, I'm, I'm, I'm shielded by this light and by this uh, aura of, of protection. Um, when the creator tells me that I need to go, then it's time to go. If, if I'm there and I know that one person in this entire city 
they just need green and good right now, then I'm compared to stay there because the spirit tells me to stay there. So I'm going to let the uh, creator continue to do what the creator has done and protected me. And for the last 10 years, I'm going to let the creator continue to do what he's done. And wherever I can put my theatrical plays, wherever I can put my books at, wherever uh, motivational speaking is needed, um, I am there faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> I always knew the fourth wise man was an artist. And, and I think I just yes. met him. Uh, uh, it's it's a pleasure to finally speak to you. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'll say face to face for now until uh, until I, I meet you again. Are you down there? Is that your permanent address, or do you come back to New York? Um, I'm, Mr. Michaels, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> you say the word, and I'm there. Okay. I go with a uh, you you. <laughs> um, you you say the word, and and up there, I'm actually um um. Uh, feed the homeless event or uh, they have my production being there in Atlanta on the 26th I am in Richmond Virginia now I just got here yesterday from Memphis Tennessee where we just finished uh filming my third installment of my miniseries docuseries uh and it's called too high to know or too high to care which I'm hoping to release very soon so um after Atlanta like the door opens up and I'm hoping, really hoping to get back to uh, New York because they say New York is the, is the land of dreams. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a fan Not of horror movies and I have a comment about New York too, but okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, uh, I, my, my audience will definitely learn so much more about you from your books, from your series, from your events, for everything like that. I will make sure everything's there. Please keep in touch with me. Whenever anything happens, let me know. I will spread the word. Uh, uh, really great to meet you. And, and I, I have to tell you, we, we had every once in a while, the, the camera might freeze, but your voice always came through strong and clear. And you have a true motivational voice. Uh, the, the energy and the power in your voice has been incredible. So I, I could just imagine when, when people are, are there in front of you. Uh, thank thank you. you so much for chatting with me. Uh, uh, all the best. And, and I look yes. forward to chatting again in the future. Thank you, Jay Michaels. Thank you, everybody, and Passion Pig. Be well. Be well. Ciao.